and now recording. Um, I can do, I can run the meeting and take notes, but if anybody would like to take notes, that's sometimes helpful to me. That I don't have to do both, but I can, <laughs> and I'm happy to. Because <laughs> um, maybe I won't talk so much, right? So, um, Georg just did post the agenda and the meeting minutes online. So I think maybe when we end this meeting, we will kind of talk about um, facilitating these meetings as a rotational thing uh, moving forward as the other working groups do. So hi everybody, welcome. Uh, today is the monthly meeting for the chaos community call. For those of you that haven't been here before, um, typically we um, have this running on a weekly basis. Uh, with the first Tuesday of the month dedicated to a, a bit more formal meeting with the ones in between, just kind of people being able to bring things, um, bring things up that they would like to talk about. So uh, on that note, uh, why don't we go ahead and I'll start with updates from the working groups because I'm always afraid that gets pushed towards the end and then we get a little rushed. So uh, I have DNI at the top if Anybody from DNI would like to give us some updates as to what's going on? That would be great. I just, sorry, I just need to pull up the notes unless somebody or else not. wants to get, <laughs> give me an update. I um, just took notes. <laughs> okay, so we, we, decided, um, we decided to cancel the meetings next week. So I think all of the chaos meetings are just gonna be canceled for next week because so many of us will be at the Open Source Leadership Summit. Um, we talked a little bit about the interns that Red Hat and Boston University are um, having to do some work on, on DNI. Um, I think those are the, yeah, those are the big things. And then we talked a little bit about the um, planning for the Open Source Leadership Summit DNI panel. So, um, and how to, how to do something productive as a panel in only 30 minutes. Um, so, so those are the things we talked about in DNI. Okay. I'm happy uh, to go into detail if anybody has any questions. Yeah, maybe on the, do you have detail for the BU Spark Red Hat intern? Um, uh, maybe. no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you were in the meeting. I, I, was, I, I, don't, just... <laughs> I don't have I any more details from the meeting than you do. Um, okay. No, we don't have a lot of details. They've given them some background info, and I think we're waiting for them to, um, to get started. Okay. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar, I think, so there's a, I think it's the BU Spark program that is a engagement with Boston University and Red Hat. And from what I understand, Red Hat is, going to be funding some interns that are going to um, kind of be in the space of, of chaos, particularly around DNI, from what I understand. And again, you can kind of correct me if you're remembering wrong. Um, the interns, I believe, have started and they're doing some onboarding at the moment um, with hopefully more active engagement with the chaos project and the DNI working group starting next week or maybe even the week after. I think we were happy that it wasn't starting next week because we were all gonna be gone, if I recall. Um, so that's, that's good. Um, let's see, in terms of uh, Open Source Leadership Summit, there's, I'm kind of hitting, I guess, a few things down below, but um, there's one panel from DNI specifically um, I think it's Don and Nicole and Georg and who else is on it? And Sarah, Sarah Conway Sarah. from the Linux Foundation and Jamie okay. from the Linux Foundation, Jimmy Smith. Okay. Um, do, have you, do you kind of have an idea what you're talking about? I'm curious, mostly um, more than anything. Yeah, so, so basically what we're doing with that, with that panel, um, Nicole's I think going to moderate it we're not going to do um, we're not going to do interact introductions because if you let us introduce ourselves, that will be the first, the only thirty minutes that we have. Sure. Um, <laughs> so she's going to have a slide for each of us um, okay. with 
just a couple of bullet points about our kind of our bio. Okay. And then what she's going to do is ask one question for each of us and kind of, kind of lead through a bit of a, a bit of a story um, is the, the idea behind it. Let me see if I can just find it. There it is. Um, so I think that the way it's going to work is um, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, where we are today with metrics and open source, kind of how it's evolved over the past 20 or so years I've been in open source and kind of how mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion is sort of coming into its own. Okay. Um, and then Georg's going to talk about how where we've advanced some of the metrics in DNI. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah's going to talk about how we've been, um, how we're starting to pilot the DNI metrics within actual communities. That's and cool. then Jamie is going to talk about how Hyperledger is going to uh, more right. specifically be as a pilot for the DNI metrics. Okay. So it's, it's kind of like a logical progression. So we'll each have just a few minutes to talk about that. And then I think the goal is to open it up for questions from the audience. Okay. I think you're right. 30 minutes. That's not much time with some pretty good content. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Um, was there a discussion in DNI? I think I saw something from Nicole about the README. Is that? Uh, yes. So we're in the process of revamping the README. She sent okay. the Google Doc um, link out to the mailing list and is looking for feedback. So um, I know that most of us who are on the DNI calls have already provided feedback, but she's just mm -hmm. looking for slightly wider feedback. So if anybody has feedback, um, feel free to do that in the, the Google Doc. And then um, she'll take whatever feedback we get and roll it all up and submit it as a PR, I think probably okay. later this week or early next week. Okay, that sounds great. Um, cool. I think those are the things that were on my mind for DNI. Uh, I saw Jesus joined. So Jesus, do you have updates with uh, GMD? Oh, Jesus, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, before before, before okay. you go ahead, a couple of things from, from DNI that we were discussing. Oh, today. Is that, yeah. oh, no, 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 no worries. Uh, so uh, we are, we are going to have a specific meeting with hyperlayer people to have them as use case and use DNI metrics and so on. Uh, this is with hyperlayer community. And then we were looking, well, we are, we are, going, we are going to try to have a buff or a meetup related to uh, DNI metrics, so everyone basically is welcome. So we want to have the use case focused on hyperlayer, and then we would like to have this meeting where everyone is more than welcome to join. Yep, that was okay. all. Sorry. Okay, so, cool. And I'm really excited about the potential of hyperlayer too. I think that's a really uh, great relationship. So personally, mm -hmm. really cool. Um, okay, so okay, so maybe before I move on, I'll ask: Does anybody else have anything for DNI <laughs> before I just cut that off? <laughs> Not me. All right, cool. Um, Jesus with growth, maturity, and decline. Yeah, very quickly, we are focused on trying to release some metrics for the next meeting uh, for the next week, and uh, we are currently focused on code development metrics and some others, but mainly code development in uh, some of the first questions. There are some pull requests in the repository right now that we are working to, to, to survive and have a, any feedback in them is more than welcome. Okay. And um, I think this is all for now. Okay. So is the intention to have kind of these metrics, th these two focus areas, it's code development and what was the other one? Um, I think that the other one didn't have um, a lot of uh, action. Okay. I was working with code development, and let me, I'm, I'm checking which one was the other one. Uh, just a second. Community growth? Was that Community it? growth, yeah. I okay. think so. Yeah. Um, in the case of community growth, I'm not aware of any pull requests, but maybe we are having from now to tomorrow. And uh, in the case of code development, we have like five different metrics and maybe uh, some more. They are answering two of the questions, in the, okay. in the, in the focus area, which are fully defined. And uh, the focus area is supposedly fully, fully defined uh, as a event. So the idea would be at least to release code development 
and some of the metrics of code development. If we agree tomorrow, I think that during the meeting tomorrow, we're going to go through all of this. And if there is consensus, I think we will be releasing this. And otherwise, we are going to, uh, as usual, discuss in the meeting. Okay. Um, so the, so I'm so, it sounds like the intention is to have kind of these two focus areas somewhat worked out for the open source leadership? Yeah, I'm, 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 I, don't, I don't think that, well, it depends on how much work uh, is there for tomorrow in community growth okay. uh, focus area. Okay. For code development from my side, it is it is really to be released. Okay. With some of the metrics in it. I mean, the, the focus area fully defined and some of the metrics in it. Um, for the other one, maybe we can aim for having the focus area fully defined. But that's okay. something that we can discuss tomorrow. Okay. I, I have another question for you. So is, these are pure curiosity questions. So what's the, in terms of the focus areas, I know that a lot of the work that occurs in GMD can be directly tied to either Grimoire Lab or Augur, because these are kind of trace data things. Is there, um, what's, what's the relationship between the focus areas right now as posted in the chat there and getting these deployed in Grimoire Lab or Augur? Do you know? So in, in, in the case of Augur, I think that many of the measures are already deployed because basically the metrics we are using are the same that uh, we had in GMD. But what mm -hmm. we are trying to do is to change name and uh, widen the focus. So for instance, instead of, instead of talking about pull requests, which is what the uh, algorithm is doing, we are talking about the proposals, proposals for code changes, which supposedly are going to include pull requests in GitHub, but also merge requests in GitLab or um, change sets in the okay. So that means that uh, my impression, so you know, uh, same now is better, but my impression is that Algo is supporting them for the specific case of GitHub. Okay. Uh, in, in the case of Primar Lab, I think that basically we are supporting all of those because we were working with all the data sources for, for a while. Yeah. And I think that most of the metrics are going to be uh, implemented. I'm trying to implement that as a part of the metrics. If you remember, there is a part of the metric description where we talk about non implementation. Yep. And uh, when I know that something is implemented in my lab or Augur, I'm trying to implement it. Maybe I'm missing something, so that's why in a field like this is more than appreciated. Okay, no, that's very helpful. Is just, there, there just, was a talk. Uh, sorry, okay. just, just as a final note, remember too that we are proposing most of the reference implementations as a project to be done in, in Google Summer of Code. So depending on whether we have previous students or not, the idea is to implement everything from scratch in, in, in Percival. Okay. Uh, using to be Percival for the data retrieval and implementing all the metrics and to have a, a very basic, very simple, but complete uh, reference implementation. Okay. So what, on the reference implementation, I remember a long time ago, there was talk in Grimoire Lab about uh, the concept of panels and using panels mm -hmm. as a way to represent say code development is that still kind of the thought yeah uh, in fact like uh one or two weeks ago uh it was released a panel based on child metrics mm -hmm. and unfortunately alberto is not here today because he was the, the one leading that but the idea was to try to support all the metrics released it in uh, gmd i don't know if that's going to be uh them for the next week but certainly that could be done during march but right okay. now the the panel the chaos panel for the more lab is already supporting like maybe 10 to 15 metrics which are those that are let's say legacy metrics so the version that we had before this new release that we're doing okay. right now. but they are they are pretty pretty much the same so right so this is this is currently deployed in grimoire lab yeah this is this is a part of grimoire lab right now so it's a panel that you get uh, basically um out of the box when you when you install the containers they Could I ask you to can you show it? Uh, can you share your screen uh, and show it? I'm sorry because I'm not that familiar with them. Uh, Danny, maybe you know where they are deployed, if they are in the chaos panel. I don't remember now. Let me look for it. I'd be really yeah. interested in seeing that. Yeah, uh, it is a word of who, who is joining now the GMD meetings who did most of the work. And uh, I have to say I'm not that familiar with it because I basically okay. installed the panels, but I didn't work in them. Maybe we can switch to another topic and meanwhile, meanwhile we yeah. can try to find out what I yeah. Daniel, if you find them, just chime in, okay? 
Yeah. Okay. Is there uh, also a blog post? I'm, I'm going to uh, link the blog post as soon as I find it because there was one talking exactly with that. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, cool. Um, so I don't, is anybody here from risk? Jessica? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, common. I'm sorry, wait, before I move on, does anybody have any other comments on GMD? <laughs> really screwing up the order of a not, not me. <laughs> Good. All right. So, um, so common again, for those of you that are, that are joining, right. Um, DNI and, 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 um, GMD have kind of been the longstanding working groups in, in chaos and kind of had the, the longest history of people working behind them. Common is a, a newly forming uh, working group that uh, is really meant to address, I wrote it down once, you said it really well, Don, um, meant to address a, a series of metrics that may not fit well uh, within uh, GMD or DNI. I'm going to look for what you said, but I'm not going to find it. I could just maybe say it again. It's it's really it's it's the metrics that either are common across working groups, um, in other words, used by multiple working groups, or that don't fit cleanly into any of the existing working groups, but are still really important. So things like organizational affiliation. Um, I don't actually have an update from the common uh, metrics working group because we meet every other week. So my only update is that we are meeting on Thursday at 4 p.m. GMT, so 1700 uh, CEST, and I guess that would be, what, 10 o'clock Central, something like that? Time zones yeah. are hard. It is. It's um, but it's on, the, it's on the participate page. So you can find all the details about it, including the agenda and past minutes and uh, dial-in logistics and, and all of that stuff. So I'd welcome anyone who wants to, to join us. Cool. Thank you. Matt, I, I just uh, included the link to the blog post uh, announcing some of the panels for Chaos in David Dorsey's blog. I see that, okay. And uh, this was sent also to the Gumarlab mailing list. I don't remember if it was also sent to the Gumarlab mailing list. I think so. But this is like uh, three, four weeks ago. And this is this is work in progress. So I hope to have most of the methods um, implemented during the next weeks. In any case, these three metrics that are mentioned here are some of the metrics that are going to be used. Okay. I hope. If we agree on that tomorrow. Okay, I'll it'll, I'll be interested. So, who from um, Daniel? You're going to be at Open Source Leadership Summit, right? Yep. Okay. Um, I, I'd be really interested to kind of see how the what the relationship between Grimoire Lab and some of the focus areas might be. And same with you, Sean, because you're going to be there too. I just just to get insight from my own perspective. Um, but this is helpful. Thank right. you. Yeah, yeah you can be more or more than. <laughs> I'm sure you might order. In the case, oh, sorry. In the yes. case of the more lab, uh, what we are trying to do now is to structure all the panels in, in panels collections. The collection is supposed to be for a specific kind of user. And okay. we intend to have a chaos collection. And the chaos okay. collection would be supporting all the metrics that we release. So for now, we have this kind of preview so that people can have a look and understand what we're trying to do. And now after the first formal release of the metrics, I hope that we can actually have chaos panels with the supported uh, chaos metrics. Okay, that makes sense. Daniel just put something in the... Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm basically finding some of the panels that we have based okay. on the... Uh, yeah. Okay. The, and we have a chaos version of Augur Labs that um, only has one repository in it right now, but I'll have everything in there. Okay. Um, okay, I think this is really cool. Thank you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Sean. All right, cool. So when I, okay, so I'm sorry, I have, just have to ask a question on this. When I'm looking at this, Daniel, like the mm -hmm. second one you posted, say pull requests merged, right? Yeah. So this is this is a particular metric 
that is yeah, that, from, that one, from that's one of the metrics. Yeah, yep. that's one of the metrics we intend to release tomorrow. The general okay. name is uh, proposed change, accepted proposed change, and mm -hmm. this is the, the specific implementation for GitHub. Okay. It's so is there proposed. is there a a way to think about the particular metrics as a as a kind of a presented collection like the focus areas? You know how the focus areas have one focus area like code development has just say a dozen metrics or half a dozen metrics associated with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so but do you mean about this, well it looks like the metrics map. Okay, uh, uh, basically, as I said, what, what happens is that right now we don't really have metrics released with back house. Okay. So the, we only have this list. And that's why what Alberto started to do is to implement some of the metrics. I just to figure out how to do that and where we have the data I in the index and all of that. So, so um, if, if really next week we do the, the first release, what we are preferring is to very quickly, I hope, release a chaos panel for code development in this. With all the I think this that is, okay, I think this is this is making sense to me because it sounds like the way the the working groups kind of work is that there's this top level goal, right, and then questions and metrics, the the mm -hmm. goal question metric approach, which is I mm -hmm. completely understand that, but right now the question, say at Grimoire Lab, is can we even deploy these individual metrics? I mean, that yeah. seems like that's the question. So it's it's more of a bottom up. Like, it's like the working groups are kind yeah. of this top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but, but, but in the end, if you can organize uh, a collection of metrics in the same panel, basically what you have is a complete uh, focus area or maybe a complete goal, depending on the I number see. of those in a single panel. Right? Mm. I see. That's okay. why that, yeah, remember that Kibana is very customizable so that you can mix up charts and numbers very easily. Okay. So for us, the problem was whether we had enough information for actually showing the implementation of the metric. Once we are, we know that, the rest is only rearranging charts. In I see. Which is quite... And you could then arrange them, say, per focus focus area, if yeah. that's what you could. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. Let us yes. okay, go ahead. To, to, give, to give some more context, our, our goal here was what we have, a definition of metrics and so on in one place, which is the wiki for GMD. And then we want to implement those metrics somewhere. So we said, okay, let's let's try with Grimoire Lab because we have the data from from Chaos, for instance. Yep. And we went through some of the metrics, and then um, the point, and this was this this talk by by Anna and me during the ChaosCon. Like this is the experience we have producing panels for GMD, um, and we found some specific issues that probably we we have to share with you in some GMD talk in terms of you know, some GMD weekly meeting, in terms of. Well, uh, for instance, for the pull request or, or pull request merge, depending on the on the infrastructure we are using, if this is GitHub or GitLab or any other one, uh, this may mean different things. So what we have produced is specifically or dependent from GitHub in this case. But if you go, for instance, for uh, GitLab, as far as I remember, we do have all of the information and we are not missing information as we are missing in GitHub in some cases. Okay. So these are the specific um, uh, things or, or peculiarities that we have for each of the metrics yes. that we are defining in DMD when we are trying okay. to implement them. That makes a ton of sense. Okay, can I can I ask one more clarifying question to either to either of you? It's just it's the word yeah. panel. So is a panel a single metric or can a panel be a collection of metrics? That's a good question. Yeah. Can be both. So the panel right now is anything that you have, let's say, in what you see as a web page, which means that you can have a, several views for the same metric, or okay. usually several metrics composed together. Okay. And the, for instance, if you go to the main page of our dashboard, that's a panel. If you go to the code review uh, par area, that's a panel too. Okay. Uh, that, that what basically means is that you can combine any number of charts, numbers, and text into okay. a, call it web page if you want, and that's what we call the panel. Okay. And it corresponds pretty much to what Kibana call a dashboard. The, 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 the thing is that we consider the, the dashboard really as a collection of all the panels. Okay, so in, in this case, a panel could be a single metric looked at 
a variety of different ways. Or a panel could be a collection of metric A, metric B, metric C. Mm. Okay. Exactly. And and usually the second the second uh, view is more interesting because usually you want to uh, have a set of metrics that help you to understand something, and that's yes. usually not a single metric, but a collection. Well, that, and that something in this so, case could be a focus area, where there are exactly. Okay. So it could be I'm, I'm I want to understand for code for for instance for code development I'm interested in activity, so okay. all all the metrics for a goal activity in code development could be a panel for instance. Okay. So that with a single view, you have all the activity of your project with okay. several metrics for. Okay. Activity. This is super helpful to me. <laughs> so thank you very, very much. <laughs> no, thanks for asking. Yeah, great. Uh, okay, um, any other, and thank you for sharing all these, these panels too, Daniel. Um, any other uh, comments on GMD? Sean, did you want to chime in? Um, no, I'm sure. These are just updates. This is because we're on the monthly call. Any things that have, you want to get out to people or? Uh, just, to stress, yeah. just to stress that tomorrow we will be deciding on the metrics to release, I think, because it's the, okay. the last meeting before yep. the summit. So yes. um, have a look at the pull request and comment anything that you may want. Okay. Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, great. Thank you. So I am I'm moving on. Going once, going twice. Uh, risk. So we do have a couple folks here from from Risk. Um, does anybody want to give us an update as to what's this? Is a, a, another newly emerging work group um, around Risk. John, Jessica. Um, I said, oh, Sean, please go ahead. I was going to say I don't want to speak for you, so. No, I think you, I think it'd be good <laughs> if I didn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case. <laughs> Um, so actually, I don't know if folks know who I am because I'm relatively recent to the LF. So I'm the cybersecurity research director just joined at the beginning of the year. Um, I'm going to be working with the risk team primarily uh, around starting with medical device cybersecurity issues and trying to see how um, risk metrics can help those guys uh, address some of the issues that they're having around judging what open source software components to put into safety critical systems. Um, because to be very blunt about it right now, they are very clueless and are looking for all the help that they can get. So um, I am still working with uh, the folks that I knew from my previous job, global product security officers and others at these medical device companies to try and identify um, what kind of things they need to measure so that we can target metrics to help them do that kind of thing. Cool, Sean. And, and more, so I think there are two threads of, of interest in risk right now. The first is, as Jessica characterized, the safety critical systems, which really have a completely different set of questions that I'm familiar with from my time in the med device industry. And I think Jessica has a very similar background, but much more detailed and current than mine. And then the, the second is for legal compliance with licensing and regulations. And that's coming, it was really a Big, good deal of interest um, when we were in Asia in December in, in licensing risk assessment. So there is some work that we're doing in Augur with the CII badging. We now have CII badging in Augur and we're using DUSOX to do license compliance checking as well, or at least to enumerate the licenses that are available. So th there's a, a good deal of activity in risk on those two fronts right now. And so that's a, another I think a working group that's going to become increasingly active as we go forward in time. All right, cool, thank you. Um, just so people know, DUSOX is basically a stripped down version of Phasology. It's Phasology without the PHP front end for all intents and, and it's more SPDX compliant. It works great for command line geeks. So, uh, okay, great. Thank you. Hey, Sean, a quick question on CII badging. Has this been updated recently? Like, I, I, like when I last left, uh, last left, like the LF, like it hadn't been updated in, in a few years, but not sure if like, for example, new questions were added or. To, to my knowledge, I am not, I am not deeply knowledgeable about the current. Sean, I can, that's actually under my portfolio. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I can. Well, 
I can take it. Not someone who knows what you're talking about. <laughs> answer that question. Um, so no, the criteria have not been updated for quite some time. Uh, strangely enough, they were in discussions about that right now. There are several LS projects who are interested in um, tightening up some of the criteria, updating others, and then there's uh, potential discussion about adding another badge level, uh, something above gold. God knows what a little end up being called diamond or platinum, I'm sure. Um, and so that those are all happening right now, but that's very preliminary. Okay, cool, thanks. I'm muted, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, good. Anything else for risk? And Sean, you're actually giving a talk on risk. I am. At the Open Source Leadership Summit. Yeah. So do you want to talk about that at all or do you not know what you're yes. talking about yet? <laughs> well, um, I'm developing the a talk that will include both of the main areas that, that we just discussed. So mm -hmm. I'm planning to run that by you and um, Jessica and Kate before, before we give it. It's um, you, Kate and I are the ones that proposed it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jessica, are you going to be at Open Source Leadership Summit? Sorry, coming off mute. Yes, I will be there. Okay, cool. All right, great. All right. Uh, any other things that I missed on updates from working groups? This is super helpful and very, very insightful for me as always. So thank you, everybody. Uh, all right. So we were going to talk a little bit about. There was a request last week in the weekly call to assemble a pros and cons for releasing and versioning. This is becoming an extremely circular discussion that seems to be going nowhere fast. Um, so we need to get some resolution on this. I mean, I guess the other day I was just thinking, well, we're currently moving forward and not releasing versions. So all is good at that end. So I mean, I mean, we are doing something right now, and the something is not doing, not releasing. We are not versioning at the moment. So um, I think we're going to have to table this discussion because that was an action item for Georg, and I know that Georg is listening right now. So, so I'm not putting you on the spot, Georg, but he's not able to participate uh, in today's meeting. So, uh, and then. Does anybody have any comments on that without dragging us down into a cir more circular discussion? <laughs> Is that for a setup, right? Uh, okay, so then we did have also uh, develop certificate of origin. Uh, I don't know if Jesus is still on. He, that was actually an action item for Jesus. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna have to table that a little bit. There has, there has been a little bit of discussion. I, I feel like this is a less thorny of an issue than versioning. Um, I really just think it comes down to how we can get this done. Um, I think it's just a, a matter of, of workflow and what's the easiest way to get this done so that we can comply with what we say we're gonna do in the charter, which is require <laughs> a DCO for everybody that contributes um, without creating a tremendous amount of overhead. I think to date, Dawn has provided the most insight onto this. Yeah, um, and actually should not be, uh, theoretically it should not be that difficult to implement a okay. developer certificate of origin process because what we need to do is update our contributor docs to clearly outline the fact that that is our process and give people some details on how to do that. And I think I linked um, to something. I linked to an example last week for that. Um, but the other bit that we need to do in order to make sure it gets enforced is um, configure one of the DCO bots on our GitHub repositories so that when somebody submits a um, pull request, it will either say, yes, this is, um, we see that this has been contributed with a DCO signed off by line, you know, check. Um, if not, it will kick it back and um, point them to the contributor docs where they can get more information about what they need to do to fix their commits. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the other easier thing that we could do is to, in the contributor docs, say just by active contributing, you're, you're accepting the DCO terms, right? And, 
and then and whatever license that we have right and um like I, I don't that's... know how well the bots work for the github but that that might be one way like what well, that could be a one quick solution in the interim while we implement the tool but yeah i mean the bots the bots shouldn't be that difficult i mean we went through this okay. process at, at pivotal and it didn't take them long at all to implement it um, okay. Because what you can't do is you can't just put in the repository that by contributing you are agreeing to the to a DCO because you actually do need that signed off by line in the commit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, by the way, I mean, it's like it's like at GitLab we wanted to make this easy, and mm -hmm. so we make it pretty clear that I mean just. For our community edition, by contributing, you're accepting the DCO, and then you're doing this under the MIT license. And mm -hmm. uh, we make that pretty clear. Um, and so that might be an easy option. If I mean, if there's an easy way to implement the bot and get get up, then great. But if not, that might be other way to alternative to do it. Why don't I? Um, yeah. We're gonna meet in two weeks, right? Yeah, I mean, we can talk to like Kate like next week and other like legal folks at the LF, right? Then well, and um, I'll try to get a bot implemented just kind of in a yeah. sample repo and just yeah. so we can bring forward in a couple of weeks if that works for everybody. And we could right. just take a look at that in the next weekly session. So I put that as an action item for myself. Yeah, yeah it should be pretty difficult. I think we're making it more complicated than it needs to be. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just that we haven't implemented it in two years, which is more more of a problem. But well, <laughs> yeah, the yeah the the real problem is that uh, all of the commits to date haven't been under any kind of process. There's been no CLA, no um, no DCO. Yeah. We'll just but run on good faith. I'm not, I am not the Linux Foundation, and I am not a lawyer, so I'm just going to pretend that that's not happening. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't change the past, and there's, I don't mm -hmm. know that there's anything we need to do to fix this right now, but probably worth a conversation with the legal team at the LF. I can chat with Mike about it when I'm at the Leadership Summit. Yeah. He, he might have some insight. So, Okay. All right, cool. Um, great. Anything else on the DCO? Okay. I, again, I put myself down to work to get that implemented in two weeks. Okay. Uh, website update. Kevin's not on right now. I think he has, he's teaching at the moment. Um, just so everybody knows, the main focus right now is to rework um, the participate page. So without dwelling on it, I'll just post it in here. It's really about, I think fundamentally what it comes down to is trying to make the information a bit more to the top a little bit faster to recognize and just a little bit easier to see for all of the working groups and the community call. That's fundamentally what it is. So it's kind of collapsing. Oh, he did collapse some of it. It's already a little better. Um, but just continuing to kind of streamline that participate page, maybe even reducing some of the text. So that's it. Um, maybe we'll have, maybe the aim is to get that done before the leadership summit that on. Okay. I'm going to give Kevin an action item. Okay. Um, so Google Summer of Code. I'm moving on. Website. Any other website things? I'm getting better at this. Uh, Google Summer of Code. You can see there's dates. You see, I'll post them here. So from what I'm understanding this year is there's an application period that'll start in about three weeks. And um, for those, I'll put it in the minutes as well. Um, actually, hold on. 
Give me a second here. So students will apply, and from what I understand, is based on the applications, we as a community will apply for a number of slots based on the responses. Oh, okay. Was it like that last year? I don't remember. I don't think so. I think we got slots last year. That's, uh, I feel like we did also, but. But they have this new slot request thing, which mm -hmm. makes me feel like if there's three people who do an awesome job in the, you know, in expressing interest in doing the micro task, great. Uh, do a, a request for three. If one person performs well, do a request for one. This is the way I understand it. Because there is, nothing telling me how many slots we have. If anybody knows differently, they can chime in, but that's my interpretation. So the other link that I put in there is how students um, apply. So the idea is, is that they take on one of the proposed micro tasks. I think maybe we have three or four on there. You can actually link to the micro tasks from this interest page. And once they've accomplished the micro task, they kind of indicate that the micro task is accomplished. Um, last year we did have, I think there was some concern that because somebody, let's say like, let's say that Ray accomplished one of the micro tasks and then posted his answer. So basically you would solve a micro task and do this in your own personal repository. And then you would post an answer, you know, like Ray would be like, hey, I solved this micro task, here's how I did it. Um, those answers are then public, you know what I'm saying? So like if I came along and I'm like, hmm, I'd like to try to solve this micro task too. <laughs> Simple, simplest solution would be to look at Ray's answer <laughs> and see what he did because he's actually taken the time. Do you see, see the problem? Mm -hmm. So um, we need to be, I think, attentive to that. Um, we, we could ask them not to post a link to their personal uh, repository, but instead email it. But I don't know if anybody has thoughts on this. You get the problem. Mm -hmm. There could be potential cheating. Sure. If somebody posts, posts an awesome answer. It's pretty easy to look up that awesome answer. Very. You, did, you did run into this. Anybody have thoughts on that? Or not? Just ask for the good faith of people. Please do, please do not look at other people's GitHub repositories. <laughs> we could put that in there. <laughs> I mean, the other alternative is if we want to have them give them access to, I mean, I guess I don't know what we could do other than give them, have them not post it on the public GitHub account, right? That would be it. And then they could just email it to, you know, Georg and myself as organizers. And then we could distribute it to you and to all the mentors, basically. I don't know, what do you think? Well, private repos are free now in GitHub. You could ask them to do it in a private repo and give certain people access to it. Oh, that's and that they can And that they can oh. make that repo public after the assessment period's over. I did not know that happened. That's kind of cool. It did, yeah. Funnily enough, it happened like two weeks after I just paid for another year of pro subscription so that I could keep my private because I'm not bitter about that at all. Was, <laughs> well, you can be bitter about the fact that as an academic, I get free repos all over the place already. So now I can be bitter. I'm not special. <laughs> uh, okay. And then probably just give access to organizers or mentors. Okay, great. All right. Uh, it's about mentors, right? <laughs> Somebody's correcting it. Thank you. Uh, so, and then the last thing on, at least on my agenda, if people have things they want to bring up, that's great. Um, if you go to um, the Open Source Leadership Summit schedule, I can put it in the, And for the, yeah, the program, so if you go here, 
And if you just click over on the right hand side, you'll see the green, the darkest green um, circle, growing and sustaining project communities. So it'll provide a nice filter on talks that are kind of in this area. So I just, I just only just wanted to point that out to everybody here because we're all kind of in this space, at least on this call. Um, and we should all know a lot, a lot of these people. Um, so it might be nice if we could, as a community, try to attend some of these talks and maybe introduce ourselves. These are obviously people who are working in this space who I don't necessarily see in the, the weekly calls. And so these might be really great ways to think about building the community by reaching out to people who are talking about this stuff um, openly and publicly. This kind of harkens back to always the question of how do we engage people in the work that we're doing? And this might be an opportunity to do that. So, okay. um, good, cool. Hold on a second. I also think some of the to-do group um, tracks, which I think are, uh, the to-do group stuff is in the, which color is that? The blue, light blue. Um, I think some of those are also probably good for this group because honestly, okay. open source program offices are likely people who are audiences for our metrics. Good call. So better understanding kind of the, the stuff that they're, they're working on, some of the things that they're thinking about, I think would also be useful for us. All right, cool. I'll add that. Yeah, I mean, the tracks are interesting. There's also like best practices and others. There are good talks mm -hmm. that are sprinkled across different tracks. Um, yeah, I think my track is, or my talk is in in a different track. I'm not even sure where I am. Business leadership, maybe? <laughs> Business leadership is the track I'm in. Oh, well, my okay. Talk. But my talk is about open source strategy. So I have a, I have a metric slide and a plug for chaos, but it's not, okay. it's not, a, it's not a metrics talk, so. I still added it to the notes here. Um, so maybe it's just, oh, thank you, um, to kind of just echo that, reach out to folks that are giving these talks. If it's, if it's reasonable, you're there, attend, and this might be a way for us to, to connect more broadly and always grow the community. Um, okay. So uh, I'm actually at the end of my agenda. Does anybody have anything they would like to bring up? This was the 10 minutes allotted for the versioning. <laughs> so we're actually on target. <laughs> I'm tired uh, okay. of talking about versioning. I'm just tired oh, of talking good. about it. Join the club. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, we, I'll send out an email probably post GMD just to say that we don't have any meetings next week. I didn't want to send it out prior because I didn't want to create confusion that we're actually canceling this week or anything like that. Um, but there is not going to be a weekly meeting next week for the chaos community call. There's not going to be a weekly meeting for DNI and I'm guessing GMD, you're not going to have a weekly meeting next week as well. Right. I don't think so. It's Wednesday of the leadership summit. So, I'm shaking my head. You do whatever you want. But. Yeah, I'm, we can, I guess we'll discuss it tomorrow for sure. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that's it. I will see. It's going to be great. I'll see a lot of you in uh, in California. So I look forward to it. See you guys. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Y'all later. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.